Astrology is a primitive belief system made into elaborate pseudoscience. It arrogantly makes humans the focal point of the universe. The movement of planets is supposed to signify petty developments in our career or love life. It was developed in the second century AD by the philosopher Claudius Ptolemy and has not moved on since, despite the discovery of new planets and despite a shift in the Earth's rotational axis that has thrown Ptolemy's zodiac out by 23 degrees. You could ask a question, you could say, who has stolen my money? Um, it never made sense when it was first invented and it makes even less sense now. Read it off as though you mean they get it right. Do you think there's an actual physical influence of the planets that somehow beams down and influences us, uh, people? I think it's very hard to see that. I think if you try to understand astrology as a causal agent, right. I think that's hard to imagine how that would happen. I think you have to look at the planets as signifiers. When you look at the movement of Saturn around the zodiac, it's a very strong signifier of what's going on in individual lives. I don't even understand how they could possibly be signifiers. I mean, how, no. could, how could the rise of Saturn um, possibly be a signifier for something that's going on physiologically in a person's body? The position of planets in, in, in the signs of the work? zodiac. How would it work? This is what you keep coming back to ask me. How could it how possibly it work? work? Yes. And I've told you, I don't know. It's a deep, dark mystery. What isn't a deep, dark mystery is why the trite vagaries of newspaper horoscopes seem to chime with readers. Psychologists have identified what's known as the Barnum effect, whereby people tend to believe statements are accurate for them personally, when in fact they're general enough to apply to anyone. We could devise a little experiment where we take your forecasts and then uh, give some of them straight, give some of them randomised, sometimes give Virgo the Pisces forecast, etc., and then ask people um, how accurate they were. Um, yes, that would be a perverse I mean, thing to do, wouldn't it? It, it would be, it, yes, but I mean, isn't that, wouldn't that be a good test? A test of what? Uh, well, how accurate you are. I think that your intention there is mischief, and I think what you'd then get back was mischief. OK, well, my intention would not be mischief. My intention would be experimental test, okay. sci scientific test. Well, but even if it was mischief, how could that possibly influence it? I think it does influence it. I think when, whenever you do things with astrology, intentions are strong. I'd have thought you'd be eager. I mean, I'd, I'd have thought you'd be... <laughs> See, what, the fact that you're not makes me think you don't really, in your heart of hearts, believe it. I don't think you, you, you really are prepared to put your reputation on the line. I just don't believe in the experiment, Richard. It's that simple. Well, you're in a kind of no-lose situation then, aren't you? Because... I hope so. Yeah. I believe astrology misleads the public, denies scientific progress and belittles our universe. There's a far richer way of looking at the cosmos. Astronomy is a triumph of the human intellect, a real science constantly enriched by new evidence. Forget about the astrologers' charts with their constellations and planets moving in and out of this house or that house. Go into a real observatory and look at the Milky Way. Or go out into the country on a moonless night. Just lie on your back and gaze up at the stars. The heart-stopping sight you'd see is a hundred billion stars spinning through an expanding universe at a speed of a million miles per day. The light from some of the closer stars started its journey at the time of the dinosaurs. You're staring into a deep time machine. And yet, even as science unravels these natural wonders, our society is drawn to the slim pickings of supernatural. Rather than adapt to evidence, many of us, it seems, remain trapped in ways of thinking inherited from our primitive ancestors. Irrational belief, from dowsing to psychic clairvoyance, has roots in early mankind's habit of attributing spirit and intention to natural phenomena such as water, the sun, a rock or the sea. has often been thought to be a malevolent force actively out to get you. 
In 480 BC, King Xerxes of the Persians built a pontoon bridge across the Hellespont and a rough sea came and, and wrecked it. And King Xerxes was so furious that he sentenced the sea to 300 lashes. I wonder whether there's something of King Xerxes in all of us to this day. We don't want to believe that things just happen. We want to believe that there's some kind of deliberate intention behind everything, even where inanimate objects are concerned. And perhaps that is the key to humanity's belief in the supernatural. I want to show how scientific reason is always the best way to look at the world and explain the dangers of superstition. I'm often asked how I know that there isn't a spirit world or psychic clairvoyance. Well, I don't. It seems improbable, but unlike the fixed worldviews of mystical faith, science is always open to new possibilities. Scientists test and retest evidence, refreshing our understanding of reality. Until quite recently, scientists didn't know how bats fly around in total darkness. Could they have paranormal extrasensory perception? In the 1940s, the American zoologist Donald Griffin demonstrated experimentally that bats use sonar, echolocation of their cries. Back then, sonar was brand new military technology, and the theory that it was natural to bats outraged some of Griffin's colleagues. But the more scientists tested the evidence, the more robust the theory became. They found out exactly what the bat cries were like, how they work, how the brain works. Everything about it added up to a complete picture of mutually supporting evidence that this really was a fact. It's this cumulative build-up of corroborating evidence that distinguishes the discovery of bat sonar from alleged paranormal effects. The so-called evidence for psychic phenomena is not robust, but will-o'-the-wisp. The more we look at it, the weaker it becomes. Science and rationality are often accused of having a cold, bleak outlook. But why is it bleak to face up to the evidence of what we know? The word mundane has come to mean boring and dull. And it really shouldn't, it should mean the opposite. Because it comes from the Latin mundus, meaning the world. And the world is anything but dull. The world is wonderful. There's real poetry in the real world. Science is the poetry of reality.